Welcome to the third episode of Things You Didn't Know in Grasshopper. I'm Chris from Beam Corner and LearnGrasshopper.com. In the last two episodes, I have presented 10 Grasshopper secrets unknown to most users. Today, I will add five more. To learn and read more about Grasshopper, download a free Grasshopper guide. 20 pages filled with books, exercises, and tutorials about Grasshopper. Everyone will find something for themselves. All the most selected and verified Grasshopper knowledge summarized in one book. To download the guide, please click the link in the description below. Now, let's proceed to the video. Arranging icons. Do you know how to spread your components evenly in Grasshopper? First of all, make sure that your Align in Canvas widget is turned on. After selecting components, a dashed frame with buttons in the middle of every edge will appear. With arrows, you can align all your components to one of the frame edges. With right arrow adjustment to the right edge and left arrow to the left edge. The button between arrows will center all components. By clicking the icon on the vertical edge, all components will be moved to one place, creating just a small frame around them. If you move one of the components a little bit higher, a bigger frame will be visible. Now you can click on the fourth button, which will spread your components evenly based on your frame size. Again, select all components, center horizontally, center vertically, move one component higher than the rest, and now spread all components. There is one helpful component called sort along the curve. Quickly you can sort all your points according to the curve. But what if we do not have any curve? Look at this example. There are points placed randomly in the circle. To sort all these points in the anti-clock direction, we will use change to polar component. Do you remember the polar system from the school? Instead of Cartesian system with X and Y coordinates, points are described with the radius and the phi, which is an angle between radius and X axis. In order to change system, we have to define the center of all points. As I showed you in the previous video, you can use the arithmetic mean to find the point. Now all points will be described with the polar variables. Every point now has an angle phi. If we sort out these values from the smallest angle to the biggest one, we will sort out all the points in anti-clock direction. Add new views. Some time ago in Rhino Tips movie I showed you how to create your own views in Rhino. In almost the same way, you can do that with your script in Grasshopper. Click on the I symbol, write your view name and specify anchor in X and Y, placing and the zoom value. In this way, you can easily save your views and jump through your script. To be updated and to learn all the secrets of Grasshopper, join our community. It's easy. Go to learngrasshopper.com, click the join button, Write your email address and click the confirmation link in the email you will get from me. You will be getting all the latest videos, learning materials and interesting links about Grasshopper directly to your inbox. Volatile data Most parameters can store two different kinds of data, volatile and persistent. Volatile data, as the name suggests, is not permanent and is inherited from one or more sources. This data is changing whenever a new solution starts. Persistent data is the data that has been exactly set by the user. For example, it has been chosen from Rhino by right-clicking and set on the curve. If you need your Grasshopper definition to be independent from a Rhino file, you can do that by changing the way the data is inherited and stored in the context menu of a parameter or component input. To change store referred Rhino geometry in the Grasshopper definition itself, right-click a parameter and select Internalize data from the menu. Once you select Internalize data, any wires will disconnect from the input. 
The data has been changed from volatile to persistent and will no longer be updated. Note that this data will be independent from Rhino file. Have you ever wondered why some elements have two dots on the top? Here is an answer. This symbol means that this component is using a multi-threaded method for solving. Components are decorated with tiny dots in the upper left corner to help you understand the component capabilities and current mode of operation. This method improves the performance of components. Grasshopper can be up to 20% faster when using multi-threaded components. Results may vary as there are only specific components that can compute in parallel. For components that support multi-threaded calculation, the feature can be enabled, disabled using the right-click context menu on the component itself. Be aware that using multi-threaded gives the best results for great amount of data and complex cases. In simple scripts, solving will be not faster, even slower in many cases. Plane size. As a default, plane size in Grasshopper is set up very small. It can be problematic to see your plan vectors on a huge geometry. In an easy way, you can change that. Go to Display and Preview Plane Size. Here you can scale all your planes according to your Rhino geometry. That's all for today. I hope you haven't known all these tips before and now you will use them in your daily work. If you like this video and want to see more in Grasshopper Tips and Tricks series, please click the like button and subscribe to this YouTube channel and to our Grasshopper newsletter, learngrasshopper.com, to stay updated and learn regularly. Thanks for watching, see you next time, have a good one.